Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India sends emergency response equipment to quake hit Turkey for rescue operations. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan upset over food shortage, inflation. And Nepal aircraft that crashed had no thrust motion in engines before landing, says panel. And now for all the details. An Indian aircraft carrying personnel of NDRF, rescue equipments, specially trained dog squad and medical equipment arrived in Turkey's Adana early on Tuesday to help in rescue operations after massive earthquakes hit the country. Reports suggest that the Middle Eastern nation, along with neighbouring Syria, have witnessed multiple earthquakes since Monday, which have killed more than 5,000 people. In a bid to provide relief to earthquake hit Turkey and provide assistance to the Middle Eastern country in rescue operations, an Indian C-17 Globemaster was sent by the Indian government, which arrived at the Adana airport carrying 50 personnel of National Disaster Response Force, NDRF, along with rescue equipment, medical components and specially trained dog squad on Tuesday morning. In a tweet, Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar informed about the development and said, another flight will depart for the crisis-hit nation soon. India expresses solidarity at this challenging movement, he added. India has also mobilized a field hospital comprising military surgeons, orthopedics and support staff to provide support to victims of the earthquake in Turkey. So we are in regular contact with the Indian embassy in Turkey and they have deployed a liaison officer with English speaking abilities to us to liaise with the local authorities. So now it will be up to the local authorities to decide where they would deploy us depending on the crisis and where we, we would be most useful. Uh, as I'm informed, the first deployment site is close to the Anada, Adana airport that we are about to land and they would tell us where to start operating as soon as we reach there. Turkey's ambassador to India, Firat Sunil, thanked India for the assistance. Uh, we really appreciate uh, uh, the sincere and uh, timely uh, help of India it is timely because, as, you, as I said, uh, the first uh, 48 hours up to 72 hours are very important for rescue operations and Indian experts, uh, uh, search and rescue experts are now in the uh, field. Reports suggest both Turkey and neighbouring Syria have witnessed multiple earthquakes ranging above magnitude 7.5 since Monday which have killed more than 5,000 people in both the countries. The tremors are the Turkey's deadliest, since a tremor of the similar magnitude in 1999 devastated the heavily populated eastern Marmara Sea region near Istanbul, killing more than 17,000 people. India on Monday reiterated at the UN General Assembly that the entire Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were, are and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India. Hitting out at Islamabad diplomat Rajesh Parihar said that India expects nothing new from the Pakistani delegation that harbours a deep sense of insecurity and orchestrated hatred for India. Slamming Pakistan on its orchestrated hatred for India, the Indian representative at the UN General Assembly, Rajesh Parihar, on Monday said that the Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh are an integral and inalienable part of India. Parihar made the remarks while responding to Pakistan's recent statement on the border areas of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, where Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif said the economic challenges faced by Kashmiris were enormous and called for shunning all political differences in the national interest. 
Hitting out, Parihar said that India expects nothing new from the Pakistani delegation that harbors a deep sense of insecurity and orchestrated hatred for India and the secular credentials and values that his country stands for. Irrespective of what the representative of Pakistan believes or covets, the entire Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh were, are and will always be an integral and inalienable part of India. We expect nothing new from this delegation that harbors a deep sense of insecurity and orchestrated hatred for India and our secu secular credentials and values that my country stands for. India has long called upon Pakistan to vacate occupied areas of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, which it says are part of its Jammu and Kashmir and are an inalienable part of India. New Delhi also accuses Islamabad of aiding cross-border terrorism in the region. Pakistan, however, denies the allegations. Moving on, Canada's Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie met her Indian counterpart S.J. Shankar on Monday evening in New Delhi to boost ties between the two countries. It was Jolie's first trip to the South Asian country since she assumed office in 2021. In a tweet, she said they will build people-to-people -people ties, commitment to a rules-based order and the desire to expand commercial relationship. We look forward to supporting India for their G20 presidency, she added. India and Canada share warm ties, but in recent years, there has been a concern in India that some Sikh leaders in Canada have ties to separatist groups hostile to India. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif on Monday gave a green signal to an increased general sales tax and tariffs of electricity and gas in an effort to unlock the stalled IMF funding. Local media reports suggest the visiting IMF mission and Pakistan are however yet to arrive at a consensus with the energy sector becoming the major stumbling block. In a last-ditch effort to unlock the funding from IMF, the International Monetary Fund, Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday green-lighted increase in general sales tax and tariffs of electricity and gas. Reports suggest the government also okayed additional taxation of 180 billion rupees, increasing the Federal Board of Revenue FBR annual tax target to rupees 7,650 billion. The move comes as Pakistan and the visiting IMF mission struggles to arrive at a consensus on fiscal adjustment plans. The power sector has also been a major stumbling block and headache for Pakistani negotiators. The South Asian nation has an energy sector debt of 4 trillion Pakistani rupees, including 1.6 trillion in the gas sector. According to reports in local media, IMF has assessed that the country might not be able to generate desired dollar inflows, especially on account of commercial loans and the launching of international bonds. It is roughly estimated that the gross foreign exchange reserves might be slashed massively and the fund was likely to project its reduction from $16 billion to less than $8 billion by the end of June 2023, local media suggested. The visiting mission from IMF has been in Islamabad since January 31 to sort out the differences over fiscal policy that has stalled the release of more than $1 billion from $6.5 billion bailout package signed in 2019. The funding is crucial for the $350 billion economy facing a balance of payments crisis, with foreign exchange reserves dipping to less than three weeks of import cover. Moving on. Residents of Gilgit Baltistan are irked over food shortage, a cut in subsidized wheat and runaway inflation, while they face the ripple effects of the economic crisis in Pakistan. They say they are unable to make their ends meet owing to the government's policy failures. A report. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan are upset over food shortage, a cut in subsidy on wheat flour and runaway inflation while they face the ripple effects of the economic crisis in Pakistan. The situation has been worrisome as the illegally occupied territory has already been discriminated against historically. Locals say they are unable to make their ends meet owing to the government's policy failures. The region is supposed to get over 16 lakh bags of vegetables as its quota. But there has been a cut there as well. Gilgit के अंदर जो है 20 किलो का तोड़ा वो भी हमें नहीं मिल रहा। लोग परेशान हैं और उसके बाद बिजली जो है 22-22 20-20 घंटों की लोड शेडिंग 
लेकिन जब आज घर में बिल आया तो उसको देखे मैं हैरान हुआ मैंने कहा मैं इस्लामाबाद में तो नहीं हूँ पांच हजार का बिल उन्होंने मुझे मेरे घर में बिजली का बिल दिया है बिजली सिरे से है ही नहीं लेकिन कोई खुदा रहा इस चीज को ऑन करे कौन करेगा हमारे मुतालबात का हल कौन करेगा जिन अवामी नुमाइंदों को हम लोगों ने अलग करके भेजा असम्बली के अंदर वो जाके इस्लामाबाद में बैठे हुए हमारा जो हुक्मरान तबका है इन्होंने हमें कमजोर बनाया है हमारे वसाइल पर इन्होंने कब्जा किया है अफरात जर जो इस वक्त पाकिस्तान में है प्रेमतों में मुसलसल इजाफा हो रहा है इससे अमीर तबके को फायदा हो रहा है और गरीब तबका कुचला जा रहा है activists have time and again blamed the government for being both negligent and systematically discriminatory towards the people of Gilgit Baltistan locals have warned if their issues are not resolved soon they will not let the administration function in news from nepal the yeti airlines plane that crashed in nepal last month killing 71 people and one unaccounted person on board had no engine power during its final movements A government appointed panel investigating the accident said on Monday the plane crashed just before landing in the tourist city of Pokhara in one of Nepal's worst airplane accidents in 30 years An aircraft that crashed in Nepal last month killing 71 people on board had no thrust motion in its engines in the final leg of its descent a government appointed panel investigating the accident said on Monday The plane crashed just before landing in the tourist city of Pokhara last month in one of Nepal's worst airplane accidents in 30 years. The panel said in a statement that the analysis of the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder showed the propellers of both engines went into feather in the base leg of descending. There were 72 passengers on the twin engine ATR-72 aircraft operated by Nepal's Yeti Airlines, including two infants four crew members and 10 foreign nationals rescuers recovered 71 bodies with one unaccounted person presumed to be dead nearly 350 people have died since the year 2000 in a plane or helicopter crash in nepal home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains including everest where sudden weather changes can make for hazardous conditions The first of its kind, Glass Igloo Restaurant set up in India's ski resort town of Gulmarg has become the center of attraction for tourists amid snowfall. Gulmarg at an altitude of 8500 feet is a popular tourist destination for its picturesque beauty and adventure spots. India's first Glass Igloo Cafe which was set up earlier this month at ski resort town of Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir has become the center of attraction for tourists amid snowfall. The unique Glass Igloo restaurant has been developed by Kolahoi Green Heights Hotel. Hamid Masoodi, the hotel's general manager, said they have borrowed this concept from Finland. The Glass Igloo also has proper heating arrangements. Tourists have hailed the idea and are enjoying the experience of witnessing snowfall while having food. बहुत amazing experience था यहाँ पे lunch करना, because एक glass के cube में बैठ के with scenic view and enjoying the lunch was amazing. Also यहाँ पे बहुत अच्छे adventurous activities हैं, ATV ride, skiing and gondola ride. सच में लगा कि it's a place where we call it's heaven on earth. Uh, हम आज गु, आज गुलमर्ग आए हैं और पहली बार uh, यहाँ पे इग्लू सेटअप देखा है uh, बहुत अच्छे से यहाँ पे लंच और डिनर अरेंज किया है गुलमर्ग एट एन ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑफ 8500 फीट बिकम्स अ पॉपुलर टूरिस्ट डेस्टिनेशन फॉर इट्स पिक्चरेस्क ब्यूटी एंड एडवेंचर स्पोर्ट्स ड्यूरिंग विंटर्स एम इट स्नोफॉल टूरिज्म इज द मेन स्टे ऑफ द इकोनॉमी ऑफ द रीजन and kashmir with its pristine beauty is often called the heaven on earth well that's all we have for you from south asia this evening now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time tomorrow good night Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India